Do you love having cute stocking stuffers? Do you love giving people gifts and all kinds of cute packaging? Okay, we are doing the 12 days of Christmas crafting. And you're in the right place if you love those kinds of cute little things like this box in the bag. We can use designer series paper for the box. We're gonna use cardstock for our box. We are gonna make the bottom of a box and then we're gonna wrap it with a bag. You can't really get any easier than this. I'm going to start with a 12 by 12 or actually a 12 by six piece of paper for designer series paper. We're gonna make a bigger one of these and then we'll make a smaller one. Then we'll show you what's inside. Then I'll show you what we made on the first four days of our Christmas crafting extravaganza. All right, so we're gonna use Evening Evergreen. It's a retired card stock, only because it's gonna go with that paper that I just found with the little doggies on it. And we are gonna cut this paper uh, and I'll write down these measurements for the two bags. We're going to make a giant bag and a smaller bag. So you need, and I'm just going to get my spatula out. This isn't as fancy of a box as if you were, as if people were going to actually see the lid. It's a little, it's easier than that. So I need my trimmer. Say hi when you get in here. That would be great. Just let us know you're doing it. So we're going to do six inches by five inches. And you can't get this color anymore, but we're just going to use, I want to use colors that coordinate with my projects. And that's why I'm using what's called Evening Evergreen. Because it's a really nice dark green that goes with this, this really cool paper. If anyone, I think it's called Sweet Stockings or something. Something Stockings. Maybe you guys remember. It has all the pets on it. I've lost my packaging items. All right. So we're going to now score. So we have a, a this is five inches. Let me, I always slow down and I'm going to do this, you know, I'll write this down for you. We're only going to do one big box, okay? Then we're going to make the smaller boxes with different heights. So we have, right, five inches by six inches. Now we're going to store, score at one and a half on each side. You could do math and all that business and write down on the side, you know. But it would just be easier since you're scoring it the same on each side. I like to show you at a different angle. It would just be easier just to turn the paper and score it on the left side like so. Okay, so we're scoring it. Now, this is a sim Simply Scored tool. It's something stamping up cells. We sell a lot of awesome tools. I'm using the small side of the stylus to score the box. Now, you're going to take a bone folder or spatula. I actually prefer a spatula, but you might have a bone folder. And you're going to... These are the these are the valleys. You've scored down into the paper. You're going to turn it over, and you're going to fold them or burnish the edges. Now, this is... When you turn it over, these would be like the mountain fold. So, that's a mountain... And scoring down into it was a valley, and we're turning it over. And those are the those are the mountains. Now we're gonna take we're gonna take our paper snips. It doesn't really matter which way you turn it. I, I tend to turn it horizontally, just more comfortable with that. And we're gonna snip out. We're gonna call, we're gonna do what's called mitering the edges. This is the same box making technique I've taught you on this channel many times. Although we've never made the giant box of this, we've only made the small one. So this time we're making a big one and a small one. Because I like to always change up things when I do. And I, and I use new papers. So I just change it up. Now, if I were teaching you to make a professional-looking box where your lid, the lid is going to be seen, I would also tell you to miter this side as well. And the reason for that is when you turn, when you, well, let me, let me do this one first. John. Like I said, this is like the letter H. I'm just making these little slits. I'm just slip, slitting out the triangles. Now, if you don't do this, let me just snip that out. And you were to shut... We need to at least do that to shut the box properly, right? Now, it's fine the way it is, but sometimes there's a little bit sticking out. You can see sort of like that. Now, it doesn't matter. This is going to be a box that's inside a bag, hence the name of the craft. Box in a bag. So because it's called a box in a bag, we do not need to miter the other edges. Let me get rid of this paper. So We don't need to miter the outside. Now, you could, at this point, you could use glue. I'm just going to use some rolling adhesive. And if you... Oops, it's coming undone. i come undone. I'm just going to just try to roll it back in there. Get in there. This is my seal plus. It better not give me a hard time because I, I went crazy ordering last night. We're having an awesome clearance sale, by the way. And last night we made doggy treats, and I used this really cute dog... Or really cute... Um, jar punch and i had no idea oh you know why it's doing that it's at the end of its rope it's at the end see the red i had no idea when i was doing it that the doggy punch not the doggy punch 
there is no doggy. Well, there was a doggy. Pack. That the jar punch is on clearance, and it's like only eleven dollars something. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll. I'm going to show you the doggy treats later. I just can't show you right now. I did put them on my table to show you. That was project number four in our series. We made those, and we made some hot cocoa treats, and I did find the lid finally later last night. So anyway, I'm putting that in there, but you could use glue. And if you're using glue, then you'd have to wait for it to dry, and you could use clothespins on this. So, you know, check out some of my many, many, many box-making tutorials. There's probably like about 100 of them at least on this channel, I would think, because I'm always making boxes. All right, let's see. I mean, sometimes I make boxes with this can of cup, but there's there's, there's probably, let's, let's even be conservative. There's probably 50 tutorials on different kinds of size boxes you can make. All right, so there's your cute box. Don't, don't fill it with treats yet because you're going to be tilting your paper. So now you're going to take the paper. And this is the only important part about the paper. Is the way that the direction... Oh, you did, Lynn? You got the jar punch on clearance? I was up until 2 in the morning. I will have you know. Because I didn't want to miss out on the clearance sale. And I'm on the East Coast. And the sale started at midnight mountain time. Look at the way the pattern goes, okay? When you have your pattern, you have to go like this. You have to turn the paper sideways. And the long side is your pattern. And if you don't do that, your, your bag will look pretty funny if you put the dogs, or whatever, it doesn't have to be dogs, put things sideways. Okay, I'm leaving these two things here for a moment while I, sh while I write down the measurements and I show you about the paper. So those of us that are demonstrators got to pre-order from the new catalog already, and we are already able to earn celebration items. So if that appeals to you, join my team. You can, you can start to get these, these items, which is pretty cool. Not only do we get a discount on them, but we get to order stuff from the new catalog. And then those of you that are not and your customers, you can start ordering from the clearance sale. So cardstock. And don't worry about the colors of cardstock. Right? This is just the cardstock for the box. So I'll just write for the box. And then we'll put the measurements for the bag. Right? So we're going to write the small ones first. So this is going to be 6 inches times 5 inches. Score at 1.5. And, oops, sorry. One and a half. I, I can't reach this place. Where am I going to put my hand be without having a craft a lunch? No room on my table. Okay, I'm packing up my card club kits. All right, score at one and a half on each side. So congrats to Christina, who won the doggy treats yesterday. She joined my card on Blue Card Club. And so whoever joins the card on Blue Card Club today for the next 24 hours until I do my next video, might not be quite 24 hours, you will get what we're making tonight in your first card club kit. And so that's pretty cool for you. And if you join an annual membership, you're going to get all 12 days of Christmas. You're going to get all days of 12 days of Christmas crafts, meaning one of each, one of each from each day, which is pretty epic in addition to the savings you get on my annual card club membership bag. 12 inches by six inches. More on that later. And I want to now take this piece and show you that it's kind of hard to get it to kind of wrap around. Like you could, you can get it to wrap right now and you got to use a lot of adhesive or a lot of glue or something, right? But if you do this and it's, I'm, I'm pretend this is the edge of your table. I just stack these up. Let's, I could stack something else up. Probably better if I stack like a basket. Let me see if I have an empty empty basket. I don't have any empty baskets. But anyway, you get, pretend that's tall and you're going to do this. Let me let me put something under it. I'll put this under it. All right, so you get the idea. Okay, so this is the edge of your table and you're going to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and do it to the edge of my table. I'm going to go do it down here because you can't see that. You'll see the curl. If you're giving it friction. If the DSP is retired. I'm using a lot of retired crafts in this whole series, uh, Cindy. So, and I forget what it's called, actually. Stockings? Sweet stockings or something? I'm just, I'm using this one because I don't really have much paper that's 12 by 12 anymore. See how the paper curls? I've trained the paper to curl a little bit. So now it's going to be easier to adhere. We will use, I will use a current sheet of paper. I'm going to use, for the next box we make, I'm going to use this cute paper. Actually, this side. This, this cute paper. We're going to use that one. Very cute. And that one you can still, well, I don't know if you can still get that one either. Everything's going fast. 
I was up at two in the morning, and I, anyway, I'm now adding adhesive to this whole thing, to the whole bottom. I was up at two in the morning, right? And I was ordering, and I was like, it would say something like "Happy Forest Friends," right? It would say it. And I was like, I need Happy Forest Friends. That was a that's a type of paper. It was on clearance, like super cheap. And I was like, I stuck a few in my cart because I'm doing this thing next month. I'm doing this workshop series in January on the fluffiest friends. And I thought, oh my goodness, the Happy Forest Friends paper will be so cute. It has little leaves and trees. It'll be so cute with those animals. So I stick it in my cart and then I mosey on over and I, I'm doing other stuff and it says low inventory. I'm like, low inventory? Like it just, you just put it on inventory. It just, it just became available in clearance like that night, like minutes before. Like, and I was like, what do you mean it's low inventory? So I was like, I better, I better check out quick because if it runs out, what, before you check out, they take it, they meaning the computers, the bots, they take stuff right out of your cart. So anyway, I have enough for my next month's workshop series. Hopefully the whole group gets it. I didn't get that many packs because I had to get catalogs. The catalogs, you know, I don't know if you know this, but Stampin' Up! Demonstrators pay for our catalogs. So you can make this, you can make as much glue as you want. As tall as your box is. So you see, how, you see why I'm putting another row of glue? Because my box is tall. You know, it's one and a half inches, or, you know, one and a half inches because that's what I squirted to. That's why I'm putting another row of glue in my Seal Plus is still going strong. This is a new one. I just got to keep putting it on there. So that's that. So I have that, and you want to put, whoa, I'm stuck on you. So make sure you get some glue on the bottom there, adhesive on the bottom, and make sure you put it on one side. Okay, like so. And again, I should have curled the paper a little better. Now, you want to use the edge of your simply a scored tool or something. You want to use some kind of edge. And you put the box, I mean, you put the paper on there, sorry. Put the paper like this, you know, so it's flat. And then push the box like like so. You know, just so it kind of meets, meets around the back in the middle somewhere. Okay, now you got it. You can see that. And little things are sticking all over me. So there's still a lot of good stuff on sale, on clearance. Like maybe the punches shouldn't be going too fast because people usually just tend to get one punch per person as opposed to designer series paper where we stock up. And I like to put extra really cute things in my kits. So I have to plan my kits a month ahead of time. That's how I have to do it because by the time the ship, you know, the shipping takes a while to get to me. And I already know who's getting my kits for the most part. I mean, they haven't ordered them yet. My fluffiest friends kit's not even available to order. But a lot of the same crafty friends order from me each month. So I kind of know how many kits I'm going to, you know, give or take around ballpark number. Just like with my card club, I know how many people says. So what you want to do for this, the only trick for this is I'm giving it a rub around the sides, okay? And I'm giving it a pinch. I'll, I'll talk about the pinch in a moment. This is, this is the only trick. You want to make sure you do the top first. At this point, I pinch the bottom. And now you sort of, you don't want to do it necessarily first, but you want to make sure you hold the top so that it's even and it doesn't stick out. And then sort of just kind of work your way and push the bottom, push the sides. Then it, then it's real smooth. And I should have probably started a little bit off center to get this to be back in center. But that is all. And it should be more centered around the back. And you can try that out first. But now you're going to pinch the edges. You're going to do this. Okay, I'm going to get in there like so. Sort of pinch, pinch, pinch. And do that to all the edges. Okay, next thing you want to do is you want to get this and you want to work it, work it, flatten it. But don't, you know, it's a bag, so you don't want to, you don't want to flatten it too much. All right, I got a lot of you asking about this punch yesterday. So I put this punch in my Amazon store. This whole punch. So look for punches and tools. I have a little idea list. The Amazon store is linked in the description of this video. And I made an idea list. And in the idea list, meaning I wrote down, you know, different kinds of things I was using. All right, so that's that. And now we're going to put some ribbon. Let's see. This is cherry cobbler. It's not regular red. So I can't really use, I can't use real red. You see, color coordination matters. That would totally not coordinate because this is real red and that's not. So let's see. We're using pool party. Pool party's in there. That would work. Gold would work. These two will work nice together. I like to always use two. All right, let's get the snips. 
snippity snip snip. Okay. No, it's actually not called a slap punch. It's called a um. Well, it, it could be called a slap punch. But the but when in Amazon in my store it's like a, a name, name um name tag holder punch name name tag, name badge. Just use my link to go to the exact one if you want this exact one. But of course you can do whatever you want. It just helps support my channel. I earn small commissions, like you know twenty cents. So go off and get it on your own. That's fine. But if you just use the link, it takes you no extra time. It costs you no extra things, and you. Support the channel. And then I can keep making videos like this because I spend hundreds of dollars a month on all of my business expenses. Like l hundreds. Hundreds and hundreds. Between the, the shipping and the equipment. To be able to teach you guys. So there's that. All right. Let's go like this. And I'm just going to... Whoops. I'm going to scoot that up there. And now you can put a little trinket on there if you want. And then I usually do this before I load it up. There we go. Oh, it's so cute. You can you can kind of angle all these if you want. If you want them all to be the same size, you can angle them all. Now this, I it's easier. Huh, so much for cutting them all the same size. You want you can you can put stuff in it like through the sides, or you can put it in before you close it. But I just wanted to show you that a gift card would fit in here nicely, right? So you can put a gift card in there. What's going inside? I told you I'd show you what's in the other one. So let's see what fits inside. I'm going to open that up now, and then we're going to show you, then we'll show you the smaller bag. So here's a lot of stuff, and, and believe me, there's a lot more room. And I probably could have put one of my honey sticks in there. So let's see. I grabbed these out last minute. So let's see how these fit in there. I, bought, I just bought these. These are some Walker short browns. Cute bag. Thank you. I was trying to find the walkers. My husband likes the ones with the doggies in them. And that's what I was... The, the idea I was going for was to try to find doggy walkers. But I couldn't find them individually wrapped. I found them, but I didn't feel like wrapping them myself. He'll still eat these kind. But anyway, look how much room is in there. So let me just kind of shove these in there before I dump this out. I want to shove a couple more things in there. We'll be like... We're going to do a Mary Poppins. Okay, that still shuts. And now you can see, like, Mary Poppins bag, you know, where, it, like, everything comes out of her bag. So this is all that fits in there. Look how much stuff fits in there. Okay, so there's so much room. Pretty cool, right? So walkers, cookies. Anyway, put whatever you want in there. People always ask me, what do you put in there? Like, whatever you want to put in there. I thought what would be fun to put in there is, like, these. if, you're, if you have, like, a team craft item, you could stick the mini glue dots in there. And these are my craft club, but I didn't know about this until I've already mailed out half my craft club. Right? My card on blue this month, they always get something special from me. They go, every month they get, one month it was Tombow glue, right? Another month it was, you know, dimensionals. But anyway, this is, this will fit in there this month. So that's kind of gives you an idea. Yes, great for Halloween and Easter. Let's see how many of these walkers we can fit in here. Fit two. You could fit two of the walkers side by side. Now you can't, you can't stack up stuff too high. My husband would love this bag as is. Okay, so there you go. So that's that's how much stuff fits in the bag. And now we're ready for the smaller one. All right. These are these are awesome. This week at Walgreens, buy one, get one 50% off for the Ghirardelli Snowman. So, of course, I had to buy two. Had to buy two. All right, so now we're going to go for the smaller one, which is just half the size, but we're going to go ahead and make it anyway. Three... Times two and a half is the card stuck. And then it would be six by three. Now, by three, or I'm going to show you my differences here. And it depends on where your pattern is in your paper. And it might even be four. You can make it as tall as you want. I'm sorry, three and a half, not three and a quarter. So for this one, let's get this bag. Let's see here. This one here, I made it three and a half high because I didn't want to cut off the cute little bear. Otherwise, I'd have been cutting off the bear's nose, and that's not as cute, right? Oh, I just love this. And then this one, I made it three because three is definitely cuter than three and a half high, right? It's definitely cuter, 
But it depends on, like, I didn't want to cut off the penguin. I mean, it just depends on where your little patterns are in your paper. And I forget the name of that paper, too. I just, so many papers. That's what I do for craft fairs. I take out all my old paper. And I have enough for next year's craft fair as well. Because I save. And, and there's not many Christmas papers left in our store right now. So if you want them for next year, this is a good time to stock up. So we're going to get this paper. And we're going to cut it. Let's see. It just depends on where the pattern is that we want. So we won't, we can probably do three inches on this because that bear won't get cut off. So we'll do three. Whoops. Uh-oh, that bear's going to get cut off. Let's try that. Let me turn it. See if I can get six. Yep. Saved by the blade. I did save it. Cool. This one's okay for three by three, three by six. But this one, I want to make it taller. So it's... Six inches, but I want to make it taller. We, we don't want to cut off this bear. So this one's going to be three and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and make two of those. And that one I can use for something else. So this time I'm going to use old olive. Yeah, the bear paper is called Berry Christmas. That's from this year's holiday catalog. And if you like next year's holiday catalog, or not holiday, next year's catalog... See, this paper is already gone. Oh, holy night. It was super popular. Merry, bold, and bright is gone. This one's gone. But, I mean, there's still a lot of papers around. Well, I don't know if it's gone forever, some of them. The, oh, holy. This is the one I'm showing you. Very, this one should come back. I think that's going to come back before it retires. But, see, the old olive is a color that coordinates with this very Christmas paper. Anywho, in the, in the description of this video is my website to my Stampin' Up! store. And in there is a contact form. So if you want a catalog, that's where you go. I did have a request form where I allowed you to pick out mystery crafty surprises and things. But that form, I think that's already retired or already past the deadline. But you could still request a catalog manually just using the contact form. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting this three inches by two and a half. Now, because I need two of these, I'm making two of these boxes. I'm going to cut it by five, right? And I'm going to cut it two and a half. Just do half and half. So that's... So three by two and a half. Let's get out the Simply Scored. Oh, and the paper that I used... I'll put that over there so you can see it. The paper I used earlier, the link, just go to my Amazon store. Go in the description of this video. Click, click down. You guys got to learn that beneath the video, there's a whole world down there of like so many links to really cool things. So click down and go to the description. And then it says Amazon store. And in there, I put the punch. Let's see. I, it's probably with the thing called punches. And if not, I'll share it to you. Just, uh, just write a comment on the regular video, not in the chat, because this goes away. Anyway, not that one. I want to show you this one. So we're going to do, so we're going to score at three quarter. Three quarter, right? Remember we did one and a half before? Now we're doing three quarter of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and do both of them. All sides. This is half the size of the other one. So therefore we're scoring it at half the size. So just to show you, these are eighth inches. This is one is actually this inch mark right there. Right there. Yeah, go to more under video. Thank you, Don, for explaining that. That's where you find it. Go to more under video. All right, so one little trick is to not burnish the edges first. I just want to show you this little this little box making trick. As long as you have good little sharp snips, like so. So you've done all your scoring, and now do you see I have both card cardstock pieces? So this is probably what I would be doing if I was watching TV. I would just be doing this, cutting through both of these at once, making the little slits, just to save time. Because I, I, can, I can do a hack job on these boxes because you don't see them. They're there to support the box in a bag. You don't really see them like you would see your other boxes. You don't have to make them as nice and neat. Although we want to still do a good job in case someone peeks inside the bag. But we don't want do, to do a terrible job. But I'm saying you, don't, you can cut through both at once. Now we still, haven't burnished, we still haven't burnished them yet. But we have our little, we've at least mitered them. Crafters have some cool words, don't we? Miter the edges, burnish the edges. Burnish the edges sounds like we're going to burn something, but it just means it's like go along the crease and reinforce it. So 
Sometimes I need to take my scissor. I'm turning it over. Sometimes I just need to do, take my scissor charm off. Right? The only thing is I save time on the uh, burnt, when I cut them both at once, but then it takes a little longer to score because you have all these extra little flaps. I usually don't have two to cut at once. I just happen to be making two of these right now because it's so it's so darn easy. I'm like, let's just make let's just make two size bags, you know? Easy, easy crafting. And I think we could put a trinket. We, let me we'll put a snowflake trinket on the next one. With a little bit of twine or linen thread. Let's see. Add some twine. Oh, I have a honey stick too. Honey sticks are pretty cool. So you could put a honey spoon in me, not a honey stick. I have honey sticks. I have honey spoons. They would go in there with some tea. So if you know someone that likes tea, your delis. I'm just getting ideas just while I'm talking to you. Tea and honey. Oh, how fun. So they'll fit in there too. I just thought of that while I was talking to you because I saw my honey spoon sitting in my... I love honey in my coffee. So I'm always, my brother got me started on the honey in the coffee. And I was like, wow, it's really good. And then my friend Kathy, she sent, she gave me some maple sugar. So whenever the honey's not sweet enough, it's kind of hard to go get it out and like turn it upside down, wait for it to like come back out of the container. So what I do is I put the honey in the coffee, just the amount I think I need. And I have to turn the little bear over or the little, get the, get the jar to turn over. But then after that, I just use a little bit of maple maple sugar because she's from new hampshire so she gave me maple sugar and i just used that to make it just a little bit sweeter if my honey is not strong enough and that way i'm not using any like white sugar anymore and it just makes me feel good because i was using before that my sister and i we were big time into like the coffee mate and the international creamers she still does it and it was just tearing me up all that that um creamer I still use some milk in my coffee, but all that International Delight, Coffee Mate, all those flavored creamers were just tearing me up. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to natural sweeteners. How do you guys have, like your coffee? And so, trying honey, I'm trying some maple sugar, and it seems to be working wonders. Okay, the cute little bottom. So the boxes, we're gonna do the thing about the edges, right? We're gonna I'm gonna do this on my table right now. Right? I'm going to curl the edge of the paper. The friction is going to make it curl a little like so. Yeah, not the, not the same old bag, right? <laughs> She's saying, not the same old bag. This is a cute, different kind of bag. I know. Isn't it fun? Ah, come on, done. That should be the theme song for this. This little roller. It's just this one, not my other ones. All right, let's get. So you just want to make an, like an, you know, along the bottom and the side. And then, of course, use. It's usually, well, I don't have the edge with me, so I'm just going to stick. Okay, so first of all, I got to just see where it's going to end up. Let me just try this for a second to know where to put it. Okay, that's fine. It should be, so it's a little bit more to one side. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit more to the one side. See, like so? To see, I was just kind of seeing where the where the card would end up. So do that, that side flat to keep it all lined up. See, now, that, now the seam is going to be more in the center of the back. No, maybe I did it, maybe I did it the opposite. Let's do it the opposite. Don't put it so far over. Let's get it just a little bit slightly over. Ha, that's it. Just slightly off to the one side so that your bag ends up in the right spot. And of course it's not flat. So keep it flat when you do this. So at Halloween time, I got some of those milk duds, and I just have a couple left, but these, oops, and then this side, you definitely want to 
try to get it to meet up with that side. And so that side, I must have cut it funny because it shouldn't be up, like that much off. And so it's no problem. You're just going to do this and trim it. But I'm saying it shouldn't, I think my paper wasn't even when I cut it. Okay, but that's pretty cool. And now, not planned. Okay, let's pretend it was planned. Not planned. The bear is perfectly centered in the front. In the other one, I was kind of planning that. So I guess it, I guess it's the same piece. That's why. I was using the same piece as before. So now you're just going to kind of work the sides, pinch the edges. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Work the sides. Work it. All right. So this is what I'm talking about. My husband loves these. So we're going to stick mini milk duds in there. And they fit because I did it before. Look how cute. I'm, I'm going to put them in there to hide them from myself. I'm putting them in there so I don't eat them, and I'm going to give this one to my husband. But if you are, you are going to get some. I'll put one in there for this one, too. I'll put, if you're watching this and you're my Card Club subscriber, I'll give you Milk Duds, too. That's how much I love you. I'm going to give you my last Milk Duds. Maybe I'll find some more. But if you're the second one to subscribe, you'll still get lots of cool candy. You just won't get these Milk Duds. Now, this one I can use real red because real red is one of the coordinating colors for this project. All right, let's see what trinket we can add on here. I'll use some of my sparkle ribbon. I'm going to see. I had, I, the snowflake would be cute. I'll do a trinket on the bigger one. Because honestly, my husband is not going to care about trinkets. So he'll just be like, you get to keep this. Gingerbread. Oh, this is cute. This, this star. Oh, you know what? I could put a heart on there for him. He will like that. I'll put the heart. I'm going to put the heart on there. Put that. So I'm just folding this in half. There's another kind of interactive card coming out. I was looking in the catalog last night, and it was something that uses brads, and but I didn't get a good I didn't get a good look at it, but I saw that it was some kind of interactive card because I saw the brads being like pointed out. These are from the annual catalog. These little brads, and there's this give it a whirl card, and I did a whole workshop series, a whole month about how to make the spinny cards. It was really cool, and that was been around the catalog for a couple years now. The videos are still on my YouTube somewhere. Okay, what is going on? Where's the other half of this? There we go. All right, you didn't get to be even, but that's okay. Now I need to get a little tiny string to get my trinket to go on there. A little tiny twine. Just looking for... And then what I just, I tend to just kind of loop it through whatever little thing I can find. Like right here is a little hole. And I can loop it through there. But bottom line is use whatever you have. Loop it. I'm going to loop it through there like so. And just let it, let it hang. Oops, maybe not, maybe not. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tie it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tie it in a knot. One side on each, and I'm gonna just do that. I gotta hide the knot, usually under the other knot is what I do. And I'm going to just go like that and just sort of hide it back there. Oh, so fun. 
There we go. Yay. Yay for the little heart. Whatever you want to put on there. Little, I got little snowflakes. Little, well, we'll do a snowflake for the next one. And I'm going to use this little, I think I'm going to use this little piece. Okay, come on out. It's a really tiny, tiny gold piece. And I'm going to just do this to get it on there so I can get it onto the next thing easier. This is like really small thread. So what I was trying to do with the other one is loop it around. I don't want to be so close to the camera that you guys get dizzy with all my movements. I'm in the zone, can you tell? I love doing this. I could do this all day. Oh, wait, I do it all day. No, I'm not kidding. I, I wish I could do this. I actually, I spend a lot of time running the business from another perspective. So I, I can't craft all day because so when you run a business, you, there's a lot of customer support and answering questions and things. Mailing catalogs and shipping and doing a lot of office work. All right, so that's cute. Now, because I put that on a little string, now I can get that onto my next one easier. The next bag is going to be easier to finish. All right, I've already curled the paper. So that we have that. All right, we have this one. We have this one. This was just an extra piece of paper. Those are your measurements here. I'll do that so you can write down the measurements while I'm making the last one. There's all the measurements. There's our trinket. Here's the other bag we just made. And you can see all the stuff you can fit in those bags. Loads and loads of stuff. I don't recommend glue for these guys because glue is... Um, it's going to take longer to dry and it's going to ooze out and it might it might like ooze out into the sides of your box a little bit. I mean, I just I like rolling adhesive. It's just so much easier. And I'm using Seal Plus because it's stronger and I don't want the boxes to like fall apart and stuff, so I'm using Seal Plus. So, let's put that off to the side a little bit, just off to the side. Let's see. And will you line up on the right place? Nope. I need you to be over a little bit more. So you can get it off quickly if you get it off quick enough. I'm going to try that. Okay. I don't think I needed to put it off to the side that much. It's not going to quite be centered around the back, but once your paper sticks, you ain't moving it. All right, that's cool. Oh, it's pretty centered. Nice, and that one lined up better on the top too. All right, so that's good. So just kind of play around with that. I'm just getting in there. So here's a you know, trick too with the box. Just get in there with your little bone folder and work that adhesive, make sure it's all in there. And I've done this with designer shaped paper. You can see it works fine with the designer shaped paper on the bottom. Oop, that one was a square one. This might have been, that wasn't the, that wasn't the old measurements I used, but you could do one, a square one as well. Oh, that looks cute as well. Same concept, but you can use designer shaped paper instead of cardstock, but cardstock just works better, just holds better. Okay. Time for, as I promised, I promised the goodbye milk dots. Goodbye forever. You're gonna, you're gonna go in there. Okay, and then we're gonna put some of this cute stuff. We'll put some of this cute stuff in there because it's kind of, it's gonna be easier to shut. It was called mesh, mesh twine. And now I can put this trinket on the front here before I tie it. So I could put that through like so. Okay, stay. And now, because that's looped around there, see, it, I put it through first 
And now the trinket will stay on there. I don't need an extra, I don't need extra mesh. I mean, extra twine to get the trinket to stay. So that's really cute. Oops, let's turn it over because there's a little rhinestone on there. How fun. So these are all the different styles and you can put tags and you can put things on them and all kinds of stuff inside. Cookies, Skittles. All right, so I hope you got the measurements. Uh, nope, sorry, this, none of this, pretty much a lot of the stuff I'm using is not available anymore. So if you like something, get it. This one, no. I think maybe this one is on clearance still. Real red, that's it. Real red linen ribbon for like three bucks. It's on clearance. But all these other really cool ones, this one's coming up in the new catalog. Sweet Sorbet, it'll be available in January. But when you like something like ribbon, we're not going to have it anymore after they run out. Because they get them specially formulated or especially like coordinated with each suite. And like this was a Halloween ribbon. Kind of looks like spider webs. This was one from several years ago. They're no longer available. But I put them in my kit sometimes for my people. My peeps get spoiled. That's why one of the reasons my kits are so unique is like I share my old retired things. Like I actually get it in purpose, the purpose of sharing it. <laughs> I actually get it to give to other people. And, and of course for myself. All right, well, thank you for all the likes tonight. Thank you, Janet, for catching me late. And Lou David and Lala's Crafts, which is Phyllis. And Phil Ham and Hilda, Laura, Tracy, Cindy, Dawn, Jeanne, Linda, Lynn, who ordered the jar punch. Cindy from Canada. Oh, good. You have three of these, Cindy? You have some of the sweet stockings of the paper? Jeanne, you're... Okay. You were... Oh, there was Evening Evergreen Ribbon. I wasn't that thrilled with it because it's like a gingham ribbon, but you're right. There is this color of ribbon right now in the clearance section. So if you like this really cool dark green color, sometimes called like a sort of a hunter green type of color, then get that really cool ribbon in clearance. Okay, Donna, you just joined in. Well, you you are, you are joined in in time to see. All you got to do is write down these two measurements and you can make this box in a bag craft. Now I'm gonna move this paper while I show you all the other crafts from the first nights, guys, okay? So thank you, Dawn, for your comment. And where did I get the Walker's cookies? I, you know, I don't remember. I think uh, a grocery store. Maybe Harris Teeter grocery store. It was just in a grocery store. I don't remember. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Black coffee for Cindy. No luck with the Seal Plus. Seal Plus I have a way better luck with than the regular Seal. But boy, that snail, I used to have a heck of a time with that snail. We used to sell this adhesive called Snail. Thank you, Tracy, for your comment. But now we don't sell it anymore. We sell the Seal and the Seal Plus. They're most much better. All right, I'm just going to go backwards. This is the jar punch I told you about. So I said last night when I was doing the crafts, I said anybody that signs up for my card on Blue Card Club will get whatever I'm making. So... Christina is going to get these doggy treats. So this is what we made last night, and that's the jar punch that's on clearance. She will be getting the doggy treats because she's my first card club me member since I announced that. New card club member. Not for existing card members. You guys already get spoiled. In your own right, you always get spoiled. So we made these yesterday. So we have got cocoa jars, and some of them have seen better days because they've been moved around a few times. So you can take the jars and you can switch the lids so you can change change them up like that. And so these are milk bones and dog biscuits from Aldi. All right, so we that was so today was day five. This was day four. All right, day three. I'm trying to make some room. Day day three was stand up double fold treat pouches. Okay, at this point I better raise my camera up because this is gonna be this is going to be, you need some more room to see all this crafts. Let me turn these. So jar punch is on clearance, guys. That's what we're talking about for the, to make their shapes. All right. Stand up double fold treat pouches. That's what we made. No, the jars aren't Amazon. They were Dollar Tree. They're only a dollar. And less than the, do, not Dollar Tree, Dollar General. Literally a dollar because Dollar, dollar Tree is now a dollar twenty-five. There was a sticker on the bottom of these for one dollar. So like these are actually only a dollar from Dollar General. So go to Dollar General and then go during the week and they'll give you a coupon to go back on Saturday, like for $5 off. 
So I get a lot of my Christmas candy there. So this is the way you can package up your stand-up double-fold treat pouches. Like so. Tea, honey stick, cookies. I put some of these cookies, I believe, in the Amazon store. Ghirardelli chocolate snowman. Okay, and here's another one with the Ghirardelli chocolate. Okay, so this, this was day three, so go ahead and check that out. Here's another one made with the little, I put little bells on it. And this is the Berry Cute bundle. Here's another one. These were so easy to make. We even did the stamping that night. And here's another one. All right, so that was day three. Day two, let me make some room. We used the scan and cut for day two of Christmas crafting. And during day two, we did Tic Tac Snowman. And I showed you start to finish how to make the shapes. We did this all on our machine. You do not need the Canvas Workspace software to make your Tic Tac Snowman. We did it, we made the hat on the machine. We made the body on the machine. We doubled the body and we made the little hole so you could see the Tic Tacs. Okay. So I put some holly on the hat. Now this is the only thing, this little nose is from Crafting With You. It's the little scissors. All right, so that was day two and day one was making a box. This is a really cool box. This was 12 by 12 paper when I taught you how to make the box. Then I showed you how to make a hanging ornament. This is six by six paper. This is very bold and bright paper. And these are the ornaments. So hopefully you are enjoying this little fun impromptu series where we never know what we're gonna make until we make it. And I usually don't tell you ahead of time, maybe an hour ahead of time or 15 minutes ahead of time. This, is, this was six by six paper. This is four by four paper. Holds a treat, six by six, and shining brightly paper. And then this was, these are three by three. They're very decorative, but they're kind of useless for holding any kind of treats inside because they're so small. So I am gonna just put these back into my bin and I will keep showing you as long as I have some because I'm giving some of these away tomorrow. So I, I might not have them all by the end of the series, but I will keep showing you what we're making so you can always know which episode to go back to and get to find out like what we're doing for this. So I was just, just to give you, I always tell you like one of the things we'll be doing in the future and I thought it'd be fun. I went to the Dollar Tree. Now we're not talking about Dollar General. Okay, this is this was Dollar General, the store, Dollar General. I went to Dollar Tree because we had a meeting in town earlier. And mom and I went to Dollar Tree and I found a snow globe. I'm going to see if I can find the snow globe to show you. And I thought it would be fun in the series to decorate the snow globe. You see where it went. Here we go. So now I'm saying dollar twenty-five, right? Because Dollar Tree is no longer a dollar. They're, everything's a dollar twenty-five. So this is a do-it-yourself snow globe. Make your own shatterproof water globe. Okay? Make your own shatterproof water globe. So we're going to try, I mean, I'm going to see what I could do with glitter or snow or whatever I could do. So I just thought it'd be fun. And then we will, um, I'll do one and then we'll do it. Then I'll show you what I did. Now, who knows if I can actually do it because of the mess it'll make in my, in my actual, you know, table. But I can maybe show you what I did, at least as a, as like a result. You'll get to see my experiment. Because I was like, make my own snow globe. So... Plastic snow globe, hot melt adhesive, glue gun, glitter or fake snow. Okay, I have fake snow. In fact, I have loads of fake snow. So maybe I'll do that. And I might, I may or may not even do it with water. I may do something like this. I might try to do like a little decorative scene where I don't have to seal it up and make my own little like shaker globe. So it'll just be, it'll be a fun experiment. That'll be one of the days. And if not, if not, we don't do it as like all together, I will still show you what my result is of this snow globe project because I had not seen these for sale before for at the Dollar Tree. And in the past, my husband made ornaments with his class because he's a teacher and he had to go get all these like ornaments online and stuff. And now they have all these empty ornaments that you can decorate yourself. So it's much easier to do the DIY stuff right now than it is years ago when we had to like order everything for his projects. So that is all. For now, have a great evening, and we'll catch you again real soon. Be here tomorrow, same time. <laughs> oh, well, not same time, earlier tomorrow. Bye-bye.